So this is just a quick review of Hilda Season 3 because I didn't feel like a single community post would do my thoughts on it justice. Also, this just means a lot more to me where I feel like I should have a dedicated video on it. Anyway, Hilda Season 3 is amazing. From the animation and art style being as mesmerizing as ever, the ongoing mystery of fairy country, the great new characters, the great old characters, just David, and the finale. God damn. I don't even know where to start with this. And I don't actually know where to start with this. I guess I'll just go episode by episode and explain why they're all great, except for one, which I'll get into later. Starting with the train of Toffleton, it's a pretty solid reintroduction to the characters, opening with the disembodied voice of one of the most important characters in the season, Aunt Astrid, inviting Hilda to come to Toffleton before playing the new intro, which has Baba in it, so it's ten times better. And on the topic of the intro, and I know I'm not the only one mentioning this, I love how, at the end, it showcases the relationship between Hilda and Joanna. The first one, having Hilda jump into Joanna as she swings her around. The second, where she tries to slide under her only to trip and fall, and the third finishes with both of them jumping together. It wordlessly shows the development of their relationship during seasons, and just one of the many examples of Hilda's brilliant storytelling. Anyway, back to the episode itself. It's nothing special, it just introduces Astrid, Toffleton, and Fairy Mounds, all of which are important in the finale. And while I'm at it, I'll just knock out the next episode, The Fairy Mound, right now. Because these two episodes are kind of similar in reintroducing the characters. This is a solid two-parter with a really cozy atmosphere, something this show is known for, and just our favorite characters relaxing before going on the big adventure. Before they then have to leave Toffleton. Again, it's relatively quaint aside from the scene in The Fairy Mound and the Jonas scene, but it does a really good job establishing the overarching story of the season. And also the Puka is the most epic character in the show, aside from Woodman, of course. But the two serviceable episodes are then followed by a great episode. The Giant Slayer, which is magnificent purely because Woodman is in it, and there are other good stuff too, I guess. Bruh. Like the Return of Giants, and callbacks to the start of the series. It was actually really nice to see Hilda trying and failing to negotiate with the Giants since she wanted them to stay. I feel like Hilda actually sees herself in the Giants, since they are people that are forced to leave their home because of something that they had no control over just like Hilda was all the way back in episode 1 with the elves. And it's even mentioned in this episode. But the giants are quicker to accept this while Hilda still tries her absolute best. I've always loved how Hilda and the giants are paralleled, so that was really nice to see again, which kind of makes it worth rehashing in the final season. And the designs for these soldiers are genuinely awesome, and they remind me of the Fire Nation. Oh, and there's also a sword fight between Hilda and the giant slayer Halvor. It's actually really cool, and it's reminiscent of the duel on Mustafar. At least to me. Um... Did I mention Woodman is in this episode? Woodman is in this episode, therefore it's an instant S tier. Hey, since Hilda's in an alternate universe, does this mean that this is uh, Hilda and the multiverse of madness? Seriously, why did Scarlet Witch have to go on this convoluted crusade? Should've just used the Ferrotalk tree, SMH. The Laughing Merman. I'm gonna be completely honest here. This just might be the most confusing episode in the series. At least in terms of its placement. And in my opinion, the weakest episode in the show. And the thing is, there's nothing even inherently wrong with it. It's a great episode. Louise is a really sweet and endearing character. Eugene is amazing. His song, while definitely no phantom, is still swinging and catchy. And my god, the visuals. It's somehow both bright and neon while still retaining the earthy tones of the usual art style. That, coupled with the imagery, makes this a real treat to look at. So, why do I consider this to be the worst episode in the series? It's just because now that I finished season 3 and I know everything that happens, I look at this now and I have to wonder, what's the point of this again? It ends with the trio having Louise be part of their friend group, and you would think that means she would be a mainstay now, but she doesn't ever appear again afterwards aside from two voiceless cameos. I guess she didn't exactly have a place in the finale, but if that's the case, why have her at all then? This episode could have just been about the trio, trying to have a normal day after being called the Freaky Friends, which is such a stupid name by the way, I really hope it would just be reserved for the book. And then they encounter Eugene, and each of them have to use their own separate skills to get out of- to escape his mediocre m melodies or something, I don't know, it's better than introducing a promising character only to never use her. I guess I shouldn't harp on this too much because, again, it's a good episode, but when season 3 is more story driven and only has 8 episodes, what feels like filler is gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Oh, and one more complaint I have is that why are these kids picking on Hilda? She literally saved Trollberg from being destroyed. I, I really hate this trope. Anyway, next episode. The Job. This is probably the most anticipated episode in the series, because it answers the age-old question every Hilda fan has been asking. WHERE IS RAT KING? IS HE SAFE? IS HE ALRIGHT? Well, I'm happy to say that he is! Look, it's a rat with a cod sandwich. What other rat-like character in the show has an interest in cod sandwiches, specifically ones in dumpsters? The Rat King! Woo! 
Rat King is back! It's the return of the king! Long live the king! Oh, and I guess Hilda's dad Anders is also in this. And he is certified not the bell keeper. And he's... Well, look, whoever Hilda's dad was gonna be always felt like he was bound to be one of those love him or hate him kind of characters, because it would mean that he left Hilda long before the start of the series and just left Joanna to raise her. And if he wasn't forced to leave for whatever reason and only did so on his own accord, that'd be kind of a douchey thing to do and would not really endear him to elf kind I mean the audience. The end of the episode implies that he did leave in the first place because he just felt overwhelmed, whether it was with Hilda or the family in general, I'm not sure. Well, while it's understandable enough, it definitely wouldn't excuse him for just leaving. Anyway, what do I think of him? I am gonna take the coward's way out and just say that I liked him. Anders is a pretty charming character, honestly, and it's clear that he does care about Hilda and Joanna to an extent, and he does genuinely want to reconnect with Hilda after being gone for so long, and it's nice to know Hilda doesn't really resent him, at least not that much, for leaving. It's actually really fun to see the two bond over adventuring, and it's actually believable that this guy is Hilda's father. And it's also nice to see trolls again. Anyway, Anders then mysteriously disappears. Overall, this was a fine episode. The polecat and his goons were entertaining, and a special shout out to the salty maiden waiter. Okay, next. I've seen a lot of people not liking the Forgotten Lake, even saying it's the worst episode in the season. And while I fully respect that, I actually really like this episode, thanks to no small part of the spider frog. He's just such an amazing mix of creepy and funny. The spider legs paired with the derpy face and the mounded body, and how his voice is like a mix of Venom and the Overlord. I love everything about this guy. I also appreciate how dark this episode is. It starts off like it's just going to be a fun little camping trip with Hilda and Joanna, before in true Hilda fashion she almost dies and ultimately befriends the thing that tried to kill her. There's also the only instance of actual blood in the series. That's how you know this is some dark shit. And the scene at the end where Joanna just accepts her and Hilda's fate and gets eaten by the spider frog, even though we know they can't die yet, it's still a really powerful moment. Not just for being one of the darkest moments, it also further shows the undying love Joanna has for Hilda, which makes a certain scene in the finale all the more impactful. My only gripe with this episode is that I find it odd how quickly Hilda just forgave the spider frog after it decided that Hilda are friends, not food. I know Hilda is a naturally forgiving person, but it just feels inconsistent with Hilda herself in The Laughing Merman where she is kind of a dick to Eugene. I know he lied to her and her friends and she was more concerned about Louise having a normal trip, but the spider frog didn't just try to eat her, but also her mother, the person she cares about the most. Also the fucker made Twig cry, which is just inexcusable. Another thing I find weird in this episode is why the spider frog just decided that Hilda are friends, not food. It's apparently because they're too human, which, like, I mean, what were you expecting when you were eating humans? Probably would have made more sense if he thought they weren't human enough thus foreshadowing that they were part fairy. Actually, yeah, that would have been better. Anyway, while this episode isn't the worst, I wouldn't say it's close to being the best either. It's got some great moments and a phenomenal antagonist, but it's just dragged down a bit by its shortcomings. Who wants chowder? Strange Frequencies, the one episode that rejects the long-established naming pattern of the rest of the series. The penultimate episode before the grand finale. It's pretty alright. I like that we're introduced to Frida's Nyssa after all this time, and for some reason he sounds more like David's Nyssa. Speaking of Nyssa, it's nice to see more of them after so long, especially the ones that appeared in season 1. Like the Among Us one, and the one I like to call the Brooding Nyssa, and Oscar the Grouch. Frida decides to host a meeting with all the Nyssa, and it was here that I learned that the Sparrow Scout Hall was also the town hall this whole time, which was not something I ever thought of. The Nyssa meeting was pretty funny, and I like that it devolves into the Kingsman Church fight. Also, just as a side note, when I first read this scene in Hilda and the Laughing Merman, I kind of imagined this scene going down exactly like the church fight in Kingsman, with David taking the role of Harry and just completely brutalizing out all the Nyssa there. Do I have a problem? Nah. I mean, you don't have David look this badass in the poster, and even in the intro, and not give him a when the doom music kicks in moment. But they still didn't, and that, sad and that saddens me. Give me David Wick already. Wait, what does this have to do with the strange frequencies? Yeah, this whole plotline, while fun, feels really out of place with what the season was building up to. I mean, the Fairy Isle does have a lot of time, so this episode having some filler wasn't a huge detriment, but the two stories of Frida's Nyssa meeting and Hilda trying to decode the strange frequencies just don't feel like they mesh well at all. I wouldn't say it takes away from anything, but it didn't add much to the finale anyway. Also, in the novelization, Hilda and the Laughing Merman, it was Louise who got the idea of the Nyssa lending library, so it would have been cool to have her in this episode, but oh well. Also, also, Tontu reveals that he never signed the elf paperwork 
work. So you mean to tell me that Tontu has never been able to see Alpha throughout this entire series the whole time? Not during the dinners or the terrorist attack or even when Alpha abandoned him while looking after Baba? All that time. It, it's a short blink and you'll miss it line, but it genuinely makes me question the events of the whole series. Anyway, it ends with Hilda finding out her dad is in fairy country with Victoria Van Gale, so then David, Frida, and Hilda gotta go to Toffetin to save him. And you gotta help us! Also, Joanna learns that they leave. This is overall a good episode, even if it feels really disjointed. Now for the very last episode. The one episode that has an animated title card, perfectly setting the sense of finale with Hilda and Twig drifting in the water before the whole title is illuminated. The Fairy Isle. Now, because I don't want this video to be too long, I'm just going to have this section be a bit shorter, and also because I highly implore you to check out the show for yourself. Oh. I will, however, delve deeper into the very final scene, because it's probably what we've all been waiting for. Seriously, what an ending. It's fairly simple, but so is the rest of the season. Now that I think about it, after the epic finale of the Mountain King, I was pretty sure that season 3 wasn't exactly meant to follow it up directly, but because the showrunner probably knew that one movie wouldn't be enough to deliver the most satisfying conclusion to the series, as it still leaves a lot of questions unanswered, season 3 was meant to be a sort of epilogue that provides more closure on the series while still expanding it. And my god did they deliver. Again, it's simple, but a show like Hilda doesn't have to wrap every last plotline because for the characters, life just kinda goes on. Except now, we as the audience have more closure because of the show's reassurance of that. Specifically with all the cameos. Holy shit, I clapped at pretty much all of these. From Woodman, Tryla and Baba, Bartel, Cedric, Agnes, who's even doing her iconic spit, Miss Halgrim, Principal Magnuson, the Mulcho Man, Tildy and Ostenfeld, Trevor, Gil, the Rat King, Kaiza, the Mara, Gerda, who seems to have signed the contracts, and even Anders runs into the Bellkeeper, which is just perfect. Raven Leader and Louise. Even a few characters make appearances in the credits, like Alberg, Alvin, Kelly, and even Sigurd, all building up to that final shot. The spot Hilda and Joanna first watched the Great Parade together, except now she has all of her closest friends. Frida, David, Tontu, Alfer, Twig, and Joanna, leading to the final close-up of Hilda, smiling in content, before cutting to black. I especially love how Hilda's adventures in Trollberg started with the parade and ended with the parade. It's like poetry, it rhymes. I could not have thought of a better ending for this masterpiece of an animated show. Everything, down to the last minute detail, is just perfect. I expected nothing less from my all-time favorite show, Hilda. In spite of its missteps, Season 3 manages to bring a phenomenal conclusion to Hilda's story, and it is my pleasure to give Season 3, and just Hilda in general, a strong 9 out of 10. It's sad to see it end, but I'm happy it ended so perfectly. Oh yeah, I thought I should also mention that I watched The Last of Us show, or as I like to call it, The Mandalorian and Hilda show back in August, purely because Bella Ramsey, the voice of Hilda, was in it, and also there was a character named David. But what I found especially funny was that both The Mandalorian and Hilda, the shows that Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey respectively star in, both got season threes this year, and uh, obviously one is clearly better than the other. Wow, I completely ruined the end of this video's tone, didn't I? Uh, happy Sonstancel, Trollberg.